Hello and welcome back to Europa Universe 4. I am Lord Fond, and we are here with a, another achievement hunt let's play. This time we are going for Prince of Egypt, starting as Florence form Egypt. You guys selected this out of several options I proposed, so here we go. So the criteria to form Egypt is we have to have Egypt as a primary culture, we have to be admin tech 20, and we have to own several provinces in Egypt. So considering we have to be admin tech 20, there's no particular need for us to rush to take over Egypt, other than the fact that we avoid having to kill the Ottomans early on. I'm thinking I'm going to do a little bit more of a turtling game here, no particular rush to Egypt. I mean, I'll slowly expand in that direction. I'm probably going to concentrate on subduing Italy. However, and this is very important, I cannot form Tuscany, and nor can I form the Italy. I have to stay as Florence in order to get this achievement. So this is going to make it somewhat difficult. Now, I'm thinking it might be worth doing this Statuan's Restraint of Appeals on the Pope for the extra bonuses. The problem is, obviously, you start off with two yearly popple influence. Hmm... But the stability, prestige, and unrest are really nice. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of, I'm going to take over the Popple lands at, pretty quickly if I can, which means they're going to get kicked off to probably the HRE or somewhere else, at which chance we could potentially do Catholicism. No, I'm going to restrain the Pope, pass the dissolution of the monarchies once, I'm actually going to be intelligent for once at the beginning of a Let's Play. We are going to raise the stability first. There we go. Then we will do that. Because otherwise we have 5% cost there. And when the chance comes to convert to Protestantism, we are probably definitely going to take it. Because it's much better than Catholicism. Although I have to say, I am looking forward to the expansion next year that... Uh, Proves Catholicism, because it would be nice to play a good Catholic game where you actually have a solid religion. Um, our rivals, we will rival the Pope, we will rival Genoa, and we will rival Ferreira. And I'm saying all these names in places reasonably wrong, so I know that. <laughs> um, let's do an embargo on you. Uh, let's get an alliance with probably Milan. Yes, we'll ally Milan. Uh, no need for human players. That's left over from the multiplayer game recently. Yeah. So I have not touched Europa except for a multiplayer game. Mm, well, actually, a couple days ago. By the time you're seeing this, and so I will be semi rusty. Um, I hopefully overcome that pretty quickly, but it is fair warning to you guys that I'm probably going to be making some really bad mistakes early on. <laughs> Not game ending ones, I don't think, but we'll see. Embargo you and embargo you. Gotta get all that uh, power projection you can start with. We want to attack, well ideally these guys would be our first target, either them or the Pope. We need another ally though. Um, who can I ally? Nobody particularly likes me. Can I ally anybody? That actually matters. Albania, Nassau, and Anaholt, none of which are known as particular good allies. Probably also because I also um, did the restraint of appeals on people around me, which is gonna hurt my reputation for a while. Um, Savoy, maybe? Yeah, we'll try Savoy. Train up that army, we've got it drilling. We really can't do anything on this front because all of our advisors are level 2, which honestly is the weirdest start I've ever seen. Okay, so we got Poland, Lithuania, we got France attacking England. Standard starts, I guess. Um, I am not going to get an alliance with you. 
You're rivals with them, you're rivals, you're allied to these guys. We really need at least two allies, just in case the Pope comes for us early on. Um, I have to about that yeah, area we were excommunicated. You know, it would it would make sense that if you were did the statue of restraint of appeals, excommunication really wouldn't do anything to you. Um, it does kind of handle the prestige a little bit, but the tolerance of the two faiths is a problem. It's going to get even worse because at some point we're going to have to take religious ideas. So. Uh, Well, we'll be Protestant at some point, so it won't matter. That's the goal, Protestantism and all that. These guys are in a league. I was afraid of that. These guys are allied to Aragon. I think we're going to have a bit of a turtle start here, like an extremely turtley start. We're not going to be attacking really anybody for an age. Because pretty much everyone around us is allied to much stronger people. To those guys, guaranteed by those guys, part of a league with those guys, part of a league with those guys, and allied to those guys. So we are kind of stuck, which is actually fine. Um, better than not being stuck, I guess, because then I don't get to develop uh, Florence as much, which we are definitely going to work on. We have the ability to go to Force Limit, which I will use in the event of a war. Um, what else? We really don't need this fleet, to be honest. I might just pull out a single trade ship and send it protecting trade. If I lose it, it's not a big deal. In reality, I could disband the whole fleet and I wouldn't even notice. Uh, we're going to get rid of the trader. Do that instead. It's not worth losing the Republican tradition early on. Uh, we do start as an oligarchy, which is an interesting one to start as. We are probably. Hmm, I don't know. Partition is pretty good these days. See, the problem is I don't have an automatic flip to. Uh, monarchy using uh, forming Tuscany because obviously we're not going to form Tuscany. So that makes it a slightly, slightly larger conundrum. Also, getting all the way down to the end of this before I could convert to a monarchy is a problem. We will automatically convert to monarchy when we form Egypt, though. We just gotta obviously get there. Anyway. Pretty much, we have nothing else to do at the moment other than get claims. It's kind of weird early game with these guys. These is This is definitely one of my favorite countries to play, by the way. Uh, I love playing Florence. Um, if I have a choice, usually I like to play Florence. Um, but they do have a very rough start. Should get better with the European expansion, though. I can't wait for that. Now, while there is stuff I could be doing here, we're not really going to do too much at the moment. Um, instead, we are going to wait pretty much. We'll just store Monarch points for a while. Um, we'll probably get these texts, but then we'll start saving Monarch points for the Renaissance. And I'm thinking in terms of the Renaissance, we're probably going to start innovative ideas. And that way we'll get an absurd, absolutely absurd amount of... Um, essentially free monarch points as the game goes on. Um, we'll get some good innovation, but also we'll just have general improvements from innovative ideas. Um, for third, second idea, we'll probably do defensive. Third idea, probably religious. And uh, I don't know if we're going to do much with diplomatic early on. Espionage ideas might not be a bad one. Um, we should be one of those nations that is not hurting for tech points, unless I play really badly. Unfortunately, it helps if I don't offend my nobility all the time. Um, 
Okay, those guys control land. Good. We've got a center of trade here controlled by merchants, which is always good. We actually get 2.7 gold from trade, which is kind of nice. Taking it nice and easy for a while. So we are quite literally surrounded on all sides by enemies, <laughs> even if you include uh, Genoa across the ocean as an enemy. So um, probably going to just try and improve claims with neighboring countries. Uh, none of these people are a good alliance on my end. Um, Hungary honestly might be the best. But, as always, I am very worried about allied, allying Hungary early game with the whole Ottoman mess. Okay. Oh, well, if worse comes to worse, we'll at least be friends with some of our neighbors. Or semi-friends. Getting excommunicated hurts quite a bit, actually. Well, on the other hand, we start off with, I think, the best ruler in the game. He's definitely one of the best rulers in the game. I don't know if he is the best or what, but... Compared to the Ottoman 646, we have a 655, so technically we are tied, but we, of course, can promote that guy. Hopefully he lives a long and rich life. Not only that, but we also start off with one of the highest developed provinces in the game. Renze itself, which is always nice. And uh, the Pope is apparently just going around excommunicating people these days. Because apparently that was a thing the Popes did a lot at this point. Um, that's about it. We have nothing else going on right now. As I said, this is probably going to be... It's going to be interesting to watch early on, but it won't be involved the most wars, so... And I really can't get... There's no point in me getting to Egypt probably... Mm, I want to say like pre-admin tech like 10 or something. There's no particular rush to do so. We're going to try and build up an absolute massive amount of innovativeness. We might even get up to 100. Uh, there is an achievement, Bright Spark, get to, I think it's 50 innovation. Unfortunately, I already have that one, so it doesn't show up in my achievement tracker. But if you guys want to get it, uh, Florence is by far and away the easiest country to do it with. Okay. We'll keep him as ruler. Get some. Oh, get two more innovation. That's lovely. We now have a 666 59 year old ruler, which normally in a monarchy, it'd be time to start to worry about a succession. But for some reason, and I, I wonder if it's coded in the game, your uh, rulers in Republic seem to live longer. I'm thinking we're probably going to go for Sortition. Just because when I played it as the Venetian government, it gave us. An absolute wealth, absolute wealth of monarch points. And the only other option I would have, I'd probably do consolidation of power or something. But just the negative 40 absolutes is a modifier, just kills your income. Hmm, I suppose I could try and swap to noble elite. Because once I start electing people for life, it doesn't matter what their term duration is. Oh. Things to consider, huh? I mean, I suppose I could try electing them internally, but I don't have any... 
public and tradition modifiers, which is a small issue, unless I do sortition. And then that would be 10 corruption. Mm, I'll definitely wait to swap to Noble Elite and until after I probably get um, Ludocratic Ideas. I might actually take that before Defensive. The modifiers from Plutocratic Ideas are amazing. Especially for small nations, which will be poor. A good portion of the game. We're never going to be a massive nation until we go on a conquering spree. So for now, the big focus will be on developing relatively internally for a while. And maybe striking at the Pope when the... Um, Iberian Wedding happens. If that happens earlier, that's not as good. If the later it happens, the better for us. Um, if we can take over the Pope's lands, we'll have almost like 80 development just from this area. At which point we'll probably turtle a little bit more and then start thinking about um, expanding into Naples. We're really lucky Naples will break free before the Iberian Wedding. But as you guys who play this know, that is a not a not a very common occurrence. Want an alliance? Sienna. Oh, actually wait. Why do you want an alliance? Oh, you're allied to Hungary. Okay, yeah. There's an alliance. That is actually a pretty nice alliance on my behalf. Um, it's not perfect. But it will prevent me from getting wiped out by the Pope early on. Because the Pope and their allies are really strong. So, got three al uh, two allies, actually. Big government reform loss, unfortunately. Um, luckily, because we're only a single province country, we should get some of these reforms extraordinarily fast. And if we're lucky, the Renaissance will spawn in our lands. If we're really lucky, it spawns in our capital. Yeah, we're not that lucky, are we? It's Europa, you're never that lucky. From three provinces, we have 57 development. Not only that, but we will, we will be developing these provinces higher. We did not get the Renaissance. Who got it? Ru oh, the Pope got it, of course. It's not a big issue. Um, oh, that's annoying. They embraced it instantly. Um, my Cardinal got bribed away. That's fine, because the Pope hates us anyway. The Pope does not appreciate the demotion. That's pretty good. Um, I'm not really worried about the Renaissance. We're going to get it really fast in our capital. Um, I might actually speed that up a little. There's no real reason I need to speed it up, but the sooner I speed it up, obviously, the better. It's not like uh, we're hurting for being behind in tech, but there's no reason to fall behind either. The issue is now that we're now we're losing money. We have 65 gold, so we can uh, lose quite a bit of money for a while before it becomes a problem. I think Sienna is friends with the Pope, which means they're going to get it before our capital does. I do like how the fact that we get a 1.1% growth rate just solely being in the Flanders, Tuscany, or Venetian area. It's a nice convenience. Well, I guess since we're not doing anything much at the moment, uh, I figure this would be a good time to mention that if you guys have any questions on any Europa, it doesn't just have to be this Let's Play. By all means, uh, ask them as comments. And if you've watched this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It's a nice thing. 
And if anyone out there really wants to be generous, there are memberships set up on the channel. There's one for literally a dollar a month. So for less than a cup of coffee, um, way less than a cup of coffee, you can do something. And there's another membership, but only do that if you're a really diehard fan, which considering who I am, I doubt I have many of those. But uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to subscribe. Make sure to like if you enjoy it. And uh, we, I do have a Discord. I think the link on my page still works. If not, ask and I can put it out there. Um, like to build that up so that people are capable of doing multiplayer games. I've been thinking of maybe setting up like a Minecraft server or something for the community, but we'll see. As I said, this is literally going to be the boringest part of the Let's Play, probably this first episode or two, while we just get the Renaissance and pretty much don't do anything else for a while. If we're lucky, we stay ahead of time in everything and we just get obscene amounts of innovation. Uh, we're going to keep our ruler, obviously. No reason to get rid of him. We're going to have to, we're going to have a long recovery period. A Republican tradition when this guy dies, but that's Republics anyway. Um, we can't even afford to hire a advisor. The other thing that will be really nice... Oh! Iberian Wedding struck. Um, can we attack? Can we attack the Pope? No. Milan will not help. Aragon is not available to help. Unfortunately, Ferreira and Savoy would. That's too bad. Oh, bother. Um, I guess we just wait some more then, unless we can get an alliance. If we could ally the Byzantines. Oh, that would be death, considering they're getting killed. Okay, so that is a little bit of an issue. The Iberian Union, so that means Castile will probably have Naples for the rest of the game, because... They always do. Noble rebels, though. These are not. Pre uh, are those pretender rebels? I think that's actually pretender rebels. Huh. Pope is planning an attack in Provence. That would be very stupid of you, Pope. You've, you'd have to fight France. Although. What's going on here? Burgundy attack Provence. So maybe it's not a dumb move. France is struggling a little bit, it looks like, on multiple fronts. Pope has attacked Provence. Oh, great. Siena was involved. By the way, if anyone knows how to say that properly, please let me know, because I'm kind of guessing. Uh, we're only 2% behind, so I will take both of that. Better to get the innovation and pay 2% more than not get the innovation, is my argument. Really wish we could get a admin advisor though. I guess. Why are we getting so much? Pope hates us. Who likes us? Nobody likes us. So why do we have such good growth here? Oh, adjacent provinces, Renaissance. Convenient. That is very convenient. Uh, we've got the standard um, Danzig Poland Teutonic Order War. Considering Poland's involved in another war, that might prove to be a little bit tricky for them. Who's on the Teuton side? No one. That helps. Okay, I think we've got Renaissance in our capital now, so it's time to turn off spread of institution. We should be relatively close to being able to buy this? 57. Not perfect, but it'll do. It's gonna grow faster. Because obviously we have bordering stuff. About our halfway to our next government reform, which will be useful. I think we're gonna probably go... I really want to go Sortition, because it's so strong. 
I think I'll probably go authoritarianism, to be honest. Stupid merchants. Uh, we're actually not going to up admin here just so that we can try and get uh, this tech level. Hopefully before anyone else, but uh, I have my doubts. The Ottomans should be pretty close, but they have conquered land, so... Unless there's an AI out there that's focused admin power, we should get this first. Next month, because we're one point off. There we go. As our first idea group, we are going to immediately jump in here and do innovative and focused admin power. Yeah. Okay, well, that is a matter of fact the first episode. So we've gotten off to a pretty good start. We've already racked up 12 innovation. We're allied to Milan, which gives us a fair amount of protection. Wouldn't mind allying someone like Austria, but the odds of us pulling that off are slim. And uh, these are pretender rebels. So if this succeeds, Naples will in fact break free, which would be amazing. Um, also, Granada survived, which is impressive. Um, Castile only got one province, so that's going to delay things. France is in trouble, kind of. Provence is in real trouble. And uh, so far, it looks like Europe is getting rather shaken up. So this could be an opportunity for us. Anyhow, thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you guys all next episode. Bye for now.